Hi guys, how's it going? Ivano here with my step-by-step -step guide on how to increase your FPS in Star Wars The Old Republic. So already for a long time I watched all of the guides that you probably have also watched on how to increase your FPS in this game, little tricks you can do with your CPU and so on. C's also made a guide recently. I will link that one in the description below because it helped me as well. Maybe it will help you too. But this one today will really be a step-by-step -step guide explaining exactly what I did to make my game run faster and also smoother. And at the end, I will also show you what results I got in terms of an FPS boost compared to before. Okay, so step number one and the most impactful thing that you can do to improve your performance in Star Wars would be to upgrade your CPU especially. Why the CPU? Well, in this game, the CPU matters a lot more than in maybe other games, simply because of how the engine works. So the game is not very graphically intense, and when it comes to PvP, most of the load will be on your CPU and the RAM in order to handle all of the buffs, debuffs that are applied to your character. So when it comes to group content, this also applies to bigger raids, for example, world bosses. Your CPU is really what's limiting your performance. So the thing about Star Wars is that it doesn't really take advantage of the modern multi-core CPUs, and at most it really uses two cores. So what you want to do is to get the fastest single or dual core CPU that you can afford. I found personally that the X3D CPUs from AMD perform very well. And if you want to have AMD, you have to make sure to get a fast RAM that matches your CPU. I made a video on my exact setup, so if you want to check out what I'm running, I will link that in the description below. Now, obviously, I know that not everyone wants to spend quite a bit of money just to get a bit more FPS in a 14-year-old game. But if you're already thinking about it, I just wanted to present my results. So this is basically the baseline on my old system, which was I think a five-year-old system with an older Ryzen CPU. I went and recorded my FPS over many, many war zones, and my average was at 56 with the 1% lows. So those would be the most laggy moments in the game, averaging 14.4 frames per second. And then once I upgraded to the new system with the new CPU, actually everything was new in that one, I basically immediately doubled my frames. So I was now getting 112 FPS on average with the 1% lows being at 35. So I put this one first, even though it's not really like a tweak or performance tip, but long story short, if you have an older PC and you want to significantly increase your frames, the most important thing that you can do is simply buy a faster CPU. Now, step number two, and I see this mentioned quite a lot, so this is probably not new for most people, is to install DirectX 9. Link to that is in the description below. I will not really go into the technical detail why this is important, but until they manage to make the game DirectX 12 compatible, simply know that it still runs on DirectX 9.0c. And if you have a newer operating system, Windows 10 or 11, that doesn't come pre-installed, so you need to download the old DirectX version from when the game was originally released. Step number three, and I would recommend this anyway, even if you don't play Star Wars, is to deep load and optimize your operating system. What I did was I went to YouTube and I looked for Windows FPS Boost Guide. And I looked at a couple of ones. The ones I like the most, I will link in the description below. It's quite easy to follow and should make it so your system in general is more optimized and there is no unnecessary background applications running which means that your CPU resources are fully available for Star Wars. So next step would be going to bitsum.com and downloading an application called Process Lasso. What this one does is basically allows you to optimize the way that your CPU cores are being used. And there's different options that you can do with this program. So this is how it looks. And once the game is running, you will see the SOTO exe here. Make sure you use the actual SOTO exe, not the launcher and you want to make sure that this is running at high priority. And then the next thing you want to do is basically make sure that your fastest CPU cores will be reserved for SOTOR and not run any other programs. And to do that, you simply go to all processes. And for example, if you have a browser running at the same time, you right click here, you go to CPU affinity. So this is basically which cores of your CPU this process will be running on. You go to always, and you go to select CPU affinity and you can see that I have chosen CPU 0 to 3 to be unchecked. This means that my browser will run on the CPU cores 4 to 15. I have an 8 core CPU so this is always a physical core, a logical core. This is basically core 1, this is core 2 and as you can see these are all the, all the other cores. So if I close it you will see here all my applications that are not Star Wars are running on the cores 4 to 15. Because the fastest cores in my CPU are the cores number one and two. So I want to make sure since Star Wars is only using two cores, 
that those are working with full capacity on the game. So in order to find out which are your fastest CPU cores, what you want to do is download an application called Ryzen Master. Out of the box, it will maybe look like this. So what you need to do is go down here, which is basically the advanced mode. And then to find out which of your cores are the fastest, you simply scroll down a little bit and you will see here all of your CPU cores. As I said, I have an eight core CPU. And as you can see, the one that's marked with the star is the fastest core in my system, which would be core number two. And then the second fastest core will be marked with this little dot. So core one and core two will be the fastest. So these are the ones that I want to reserve for Star Wars The Old Republic. Pretty simple. And then again, you go back here, you go to Star Wars, you make sure that all of these cores are toggled on. Again, the first four because of logical and physical, this would be core one and core two. Make sure Star Wars is using all of them and then take the other applications that you're going to be running in the background off of those fastest cores. Another thing you can do that can help sometimes is if you go to CPU Affinity always and click Disable SMT. What this will basically do is automatically disable every second core of your CPU. For some users, I think especially the ones that have something like 16 core CPUs, this can help with game performance. But when I personally tested it, it didn't change anything. So I will leave it on for now. That's something that you can try out for yourself. Okay, so next we're loading into the game. So escape preferences and you go to graphics. These are the settings that I use. They work quite well for me. First things first, you want to turn VSync in-game off. I personally play in full screen window mode because when I stream and tap out, it's just more convenient and the performance is almost the same as full screen mode. Now, obviously very important, you want to make sure that the frame rate here is not kept to something artificially very low. So I personally have it set to the maximum. You can also cap this to 120 or 100, depending on how powerful your system is and what kind of monitor you have. But in general, I keep it to the maximum. I also have a 240 Hertz refresh rate monitor. So you want to make sure that whatever you choose here matches the refresh rate that's configured for your monitor. In terms of resolution, I tested 1440p and 1080p. I didn't find a big difference, to be honest. So for me, it's really personal preference to play at 1080p, but especially if you have a good graphics card, 1440p might work as well. Then when it comes to the settings down here, I put everything on low and turn off all of the advanced features because again, I optimize for maximum performance. I don't really care too much about the game looking very nice. However, the one thing that I keep on very high is the visible character limit. This is important in PvP because you want to see when people are coming back from the respawn, for example. And if this is set to low, maybe you will not see the enemies until they're already right in your face. So keep this one on very high and the rest you can turn down for maximum performance. Now, another thing to increase performance would be turning off nameplates and useless elements of the interface. I've also tested the nameplate scaling, but personally found no big difference in performance here. So it's really a matter of personal preference whether you want to have this on or off. Me personally, I like to always show the health bar, the name on self, and of course also the class symbols and the resolve bar. For me, those are just mandatory for PvP, so I can always see if I'm white barred. And also I find that it's much easier to see your health here rather than looking down here. So now we are done in game and we are going to the Nvidia settings. Sorry for the German, but I will do my best to translate. Now the most important thing that you do here to make your game smooth is to go to G-Sync, which you will find here below display and make sure that G-Sync and G-Sync compatibility is active if your monitor supports it and then toggle window and full screen mode. Because again, I'm playing in windowed full screen mode, so you want to have this box toggled. Now you click apply and go to your 3D settings. In the 3D settings, there's not too many things that you need to change. Obviously, you want to make sure that you are in maximum performance mode here and there's no power saving going on or anything like this. But this is also talked about in the Windows optimization guide that I will link. The only other thing I'm doing here is that we have VSync active in the NVIDIA settings. And remember, we turned this off in the game itself, but there is a reason it's active here. For the guys that are interested in the technical details on why this is a little better, I will link to an article in the description below. So if you want to read more on that, check it out. If not, just make sure that VSync is active in here and disabled in the game. And that's really all I'm doing. The only other thing you can do and again, this kind of comes back to point number one, would be overclocking your CPU especially. Now, obviously, there's a big disclaimer on that one. Overclocking, if you're doing it wrong, can destroy your CPU and void any warranty that you might have. So if you fuck up your PC, don't come here and cry about it. I'm not recommending you do this. And if you do so, you're doing it at your own risk. That being said, 
I will link a guide in the description below and obviously overclocking will be very specific to your CPU. So if you have the 9800X3D like me, there's a couple of guides. I will link the one that I used in the description below. Right now my CPU is running at 5.6 gigahertz instead of the 5.2 out of the box. So I did find a little additional performance right there. Because remember, the single core performance is very important. So having a 16 or 32 core CPU doesn't really matter if the game anyway just uses two cores, but boosting those two cores from let's say 5 gigahertz to 5.6 will give you a decent performance boost. So after all these optimizations, how big of a boost can you expect? Well, in my case, I tracked the FPS over about 120 war zones. And from the baseline of my new PC that was completely unoptimized to the one that I'm running now, I saw an FPS boost of 18. So we went from 112 FPS on average to 130. And if my math is not wrong, that is roughly a 16% FPS boost. But when it comes to the 1% lows, I went from 35 FPS to 45. And in terms of percentages, that is a 28.5% performance boost. And notice 1% lows are especially important because, again, those are the most laggy moments in the game. So if you can improve those, the game will be much more playable and feel smooth overall. All of this, was it worth it? Should you do the same? I guess you'll have to decide that one for yourself. For me, especially when I record or stream the game, it feels a lot smoother now, which also made me enjoy the game a lot more again. And that might be anecdotal only, but since I have the new PC, I've gotten a lot more 20k DPS games than before, which might just be lucky or not. But I would say that, especially if you're playing melee classes, having a high and more stable FPS is very important, as it helps you move your character better and keep in range of enemies better, which means higher APM and more DPS. So give it a try. Let me know in the comments below how it goes for you. Hopefully this guide was helpful. And if it did, as always, don't forget to leave this one a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.